living in dark days, but the God who is all light watches over his own. He sees through the shadows and he can see us through the most difficult seasons of life. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. And today on Enjoying the Journey, Scott Pauley is walking us through one of the most famous and familiar scriptures, Psalm 23, to help us get a fresh glimpse of the shepherd in the shadows. Let's join the study now in God's Word. Are you getting to know your shepherd a little better? We're studying in Psalm 23 about the Lord who is our shepherd. But do you know where the first mention of God as shepherd is? All the way back in the book of beginnings, Genesis chapter 49 and verse number 24, Jacob is nearing the end of his journey. He's giving a prophecy over his children. And he says this in Genesis 49 verse 24, But his bow abode in strength, and the arms of his hands were made strong by the hands of the mighty God of Jacob. And then in parenthesis we read these words, From thence is the shepherd the stone of Israel. Now remember, this was prophetic. He said that from this mighty God would come the shepherd, not a shepherd, the shepherd. And just to clarify, the shepherd is also the stone of Israel. Well, who is that shepherd and who is that stone? It's Jesus. Jesus is the one who would come and say, I'm the good shepherd. I'm the shepherd you've been looking for. I'm the shepherd of your souls. I'm the shepherd of your eternal destiny, and I'm the shepherd of your situation right here and now. And the shepherd is also the stone. What a word of stability that is. He's, he's the stone of stumbling to some, but he is the cornerstone for us. He is our shepherd. He is our stone. And when the Lord is your shepherd, you can say, I shall not want. We're learning a great deal from this psalm about the Lord's leading. And we've learned several things. In verse 2, we've learned that when the Lord leads us, he always leads us to rest and to peace. One mark of God's leading is it brings that quiet calm of soul and spirit. Only the Lord can give that. The peace of God rules in your heart. In verse 3, we learn that he leads us in right paths. The Lord will always choose the right direction for us. He'll help you make the right decision. And so let him choose. The Lord always makes better choices than we do. Uh, Jim Elliott said, God always gives his best to those who leave the choice with him. And I say amen to that. And then we've come on in our study to verse number four, and we've learned that the Lord also leads us through the rough places. In verse four, it's the valley of the shadow of death. When you come to verse five, it's the battle. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of mine enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil, my cup runneth over. So you get two really negative pictures, frankly. You get a valley and a battle. Nobody likes the valleys of life, and nobody likes the conflict of life, and yet, oh, this is wonderful. The Lord is leading through both of those. Perhaps today you're dealing with some great difficulty, some valley, some valley that's so deep you'll think you'll never climb out of it, some battle that is so hot you think it will never be over. I came to tell you today that the Lord is still at work. The Lord is leading and working in your life. Now, take the valley for just a moment as an illustration of what I'm talking about. Did you ever notice in Scripture how many wonderful things happened in the valley? In fact, people will tell you in this agricultural society that the psalmist was writing in, and even today, that the most beautiful fruit, the best grass, the best water, the, the best soil is found in the valley. The Lord oftentimes does his greatest work in the valley times of life. It's in the valley that we learn most about our good shepherd. Do you remember back in 2 Chronicles chapter number 20? God's people were in a terrible battle. I'm telling you, the, the battle was hot, and the Lord showed up, and God brought victory. And in 2 Chronicles 20 verse 26, it says, And on the fourth day they assembled themselves in the valley of Barakah, for there they blessed the Lord. Therefore the name of the same place was called the Valley of Barakah unto this day. Barakah literally means blessing. I love this. When it was done, they did not remember the valley as a place of battle. They remembered it as a place of blessing. 
When you get on the other side of this valley and this battle that you're in right now, it's not the valley or the battle that you're going to remember. It is the blessing that God is giving you here. It is the blessing of coming to know God in a greater way. It's not in peace and prosperity that we learn the most about the Lord. It's in the trials of life and the necessity and the difficulty. So if you're there, praise God. Bless the Lord in the midst of your valley, in the midst of your battle today, because the Lord is still your shepherd. You have everything you need. You can say confidently and full of faith, I shall not want. Another great example, Psalm 84, verse 6, says, Who passing through the valley of Baca make it a well, the rain also filleth the pools. The, the name Baca literally means weeping. Listen to it again. You're passing through the valley of weeping. Boy, that sounds like a depressing place. That sounds like a sad place to be. Yes, well, notice a couple things. First of all, you're just passing through. Remember that? Uh, You're not staying in it. Do I go through the valley of the shadow of death? They're passing through the valley of Baca. So it's not the end of the story. Even Jesus on the cross, that was not the end. The Bible says, for the joy that was set before him, he endured the cross. He was looking beyond it to the other side of the valley, to the other side of the battle. But then notice this. There's a little play on words. Baca, remember, means weeping. It says, you pass through the valley of Baca, you make it a well. Those tears become a well that you can draw from the rest of your life. That trial becomes a point of reference, not because of the difficulty, but because of God's sufficiency. For the rest of your life, you're going to be able to say, yes, I had a valley. Yes, I had a great need. Yes, I went through the the shadows time of life, but God met me there. The Lord was more than enough there. It'll be a point of reference for you. You'll draw strength from that in the future valleys and battles that will inevitably come, but also others will be helped by it. Paul said, we comfort them who are in any trouble with the same comfort wherewith we ourselves are comforted of God. Did you ever think that maybe God is letting you go through some valley and he's not just letting you go through it for you, you're actually going through it for somebody else? That the Lord is with you in that valley and teaching you something that you could learn through no other means. That the valley is God's classroom. That the battlefront is the Lord's place of teaching and instruction, and that when you come out, you're going to know God better. I must point this out to you, and perhaps we'll, we'll return to this thought uh, in the future, but in Psalm 23, verse 4, this little negative section where the valley and the battle is, the enemies and the difficulties and shadows, did you ever notice what the first word of that section is? Psalm 23, verse 4 is the word, yea. <laughs> yea? positive word in a negative context? Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Because he's looking beyond the circumstances to the God who is yea and amen. 2 Corinthians chapter 1 verse 20 says that in Christ it is yea and amen. All the promises of God are yea and amen in Jesus Christ. Do you have problems? Yes. But yes, you have promises too. Uh, Do you have difficulty? Yes, but you have divine resources too. Do you have trouble and trial? Oh, yes, but yes, double yes, you have the Lord's presence with you in the midst of all of that. Why? Because the Lord always leads us through the rough places. We'll return to Psalm 23 again to find one more place the Lord leads us to, and I can't wait to show you and share it with you. But I hope and pray the Holy Spirit will etch it on your soul and stamp it on your memory today that the Lord wants to lead you. And when the Lord is your shepherd, you can say with the psalmist, I shall not want. Do you know Psalm 23? Or do you know the shepherd of Psalm 23? Our prayer is that this study will bring you to a more intimate fellowship with the shepherd. Be sure to visit our website, enjoyingthejourney.org, for daily encouragement. There are many resources available to help your joy. Also on our website, click the events page to see Scott's preaching itinerary, and if you live close to one of his meetings, he would be thrilled to meet you. Again, thank you for listening today, and we hope you'll join us for the next study of The Shepherd in the Shadows here on Enjoying the Journey.